Hello all, it's Juha from Ali, and uh, today we're going to be talking about how to add business context to your uh, on your data catalog. Um, practical things, uh, this session is recorded, you will be able to get the recording uh, afterwards, as, as long as you've registered. And uh, of course, I, I hope we'll make this available otherwise as well. Um, there will be a possibility to post questions on the chat as we go. There will be time for Q&A at the end, so um, most likely we will answer them uh, at that point. But my buddy Stan is there active on the chat and he will be keeping track of questions that you pose. I do believe we have a poll or two that we will uh, launch at some point during this, this uh, presentation or at the QA point. Uh, so you can also answer those polls. We'll discuss those topics as well. Um, I think those are the most important things. If you if you have anything to ask or anything, you can post on the chat and uh, Stan will deal with that. Let's get started. First of all, hello, uh, it's Juha here. Um, some of you might might know me, but as a brief introduction, I'm the CPO Chief Product Officer at Ellie. My daily tasks basically revolve around the tool itself and what do we do with it and so on and so forth. But I am also heavily involved in kind of methodology and, and best practices work and uh, all sorts of support things where needed. I've uh, been in this business for well, 12, 13 years and uh, at early now three plus years altogether. Uh, you'll find me on LinkedIn as well. So if you have any questions or thoughts or you'd like to connect, please do that. Ellie, um, of course, is the tool that we are going to be talking about. Well, not, not necessarily talking about the tool itself, but, but about the things that you do with that tool. And uh, Ellie, of course, is a web-based tool for data product design and data modeling. We're going to be uh, talking about how data modeling will help us here. Uh, Ellie, as a company, has been around now for five plus years. Uh, we're actually pretty nicely uh, proceeding here. We have 50 plus customers, 10 plus countries. Uh, I think the employee number is already uh, out of date, even though I updated this slide like a couple of weeks ago. I think we're now at 18 at this point and recruiting more constantly. We secured some nice funding last summer and um, you can see the website there. We'll get back to that topic at the end, but there's also a free trial available if you're interested in trying out Ellie. But this is not going to be really about the tool itself. We're going to be talking about things that you can do with the help of that tool. And our focus is going to be on data catalogs. The agenda today looks like this. Basically, we'll start with the kind of very basics. What are data catalogs actually kind of doing? What's the point of having a data catalog? Uh, how they are usually implemented? Uh, we'll cover a couple of different approaches, what, what we're calling here bottom-up approach and the top-down approach. For the bottom-up approach, and I'll explain what I mean by this, uh, we'll, we'll uh, see how that fails and for what reasons. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the top-down approach, what that is and how it works. And these are real things that we've seen at our customers, not just you know theoretical talk here. Uh, we'll talk about capturing business context. That's the main topic of today. How do we capture business context? How to use data models for that? Uh, how to connect the top-down and bottom-up approaches uh, with the help of data models? And then kind of real-life examples based on true stories and our customers about how Ellie and a data catalog tool can be used in unison to, um, to control your metadata. We'll also, in the end, uh, talk about kind of our aims and goals and sort of vision of where do we want to go with this, how we want to make, how do how we want to help you make metadata management easier, and uh, what the kind of overall view is that we see where the metadata management area is kind of going to. But that's the agenda, and as I mentioned at the end, there there will be time for questions and answers. You can post them on the chat. Stan will be. Uh, keeping track of those, and then we'll discuss uh, around those topics at the end. We'll start with the sort of basics. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a theoretical approach to anything. I'm not going to be um, academically correct in my definitions here. But the idea is that, uh, roughly speaking, data catalogs usually contain three types of metadata. 
we have the kind of obvious, let's start from the obvious one from the left side. We have the obvious thing, the technical metadata. And this technical metadata is mostly about where the data is actually physically stored. What format is it in? Is it, you know, is it uh, SQL tables on some databases? Is it files on a data lake? Uh, where did it come from? We have understanding of the technical lineage. This data here is actually originally from that other place, and these sorts of actions happened to get that data there. This is the technical metadata that describes our existing data assets as they appear in our various systems and sources. And there's a lot of that, and of course we need to cover that as well, but uh, this is just one of the types of metadata that we have to deal with. On the right hand side, we have governance metadata. Now, governance metadata is, of course, the, the kind of obvious thing that you want to do when you, when you um, impl implement a data catalog. You really want to be able to document who owns the data, uh, what sorts of rules and policies apply, uh, what you can do with the data, what you can't do with the data, how do you um, access the data, for example. So these, these are kind of related to, to um, ways of using the data and the rules and policies around that. But in the middle here, we have what we call contextual metadata. And the contextual metadata relates to uh, how the data is actually related to our everyday business. So what does the data mean? We're talking about semantical meaning of data. There's a bunch of numbers in the table somewhere. What does that mean? How does the data that we have relate to other things that we have data about? It's not just that, you know, there's a table here and there's foreign key that points to that other table, but what else? What do we have in terms of the business? What sorts of relationships between objects should, should exist? And then in the end, it comes down to what's in it for me. Is this data actually something that I care about? Is this the data that I need to, you know, solve my actual business problem? These are the kind of basic building blocks. Obviously, you can uh, subdivide these into various categories and so on and so forth. But on a high level for the purposes of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, this is kind of the rough division of different kinds of metadata that usually goes into a catalog. Now, interestingly enough, what a uh, usual data catalog implementation looks like is this. So, Catalogs are very, very good at ingesting technical metadata automatically from different sorts of sources. And uh, we'll cover this uh, in a moment more. But the usual data catalog implementation looks like you get a lot of technical metadata. You put that all in the data catalog and you're very happy with that. And then you do a little bit of governance on the side. You try to figure out maybe data owners. You perhaps uh, utilize some sort of um, sensitivity uh, properties to, to um, mark down um, personal data or, or something like that relating to GDPR or something like that. You do a little bit of work there and you perhaps have a little bit of context. You have maybe a list of business terms and some of those might be linked to certain data sets or something like that. But the vast majority of the metadata and of the work that you put into the catalog is actually around technical metadata. And uh, this is kind of a natural way of approaching this, of course, because, you know, all of us data people, we like our databases, we like, like our tables, we like our files. So registering those seems like a, you know, good, good thing to do. It's a sort of a library of, you know, what sorts of things we actually have our, in our databases. Good, good enough. It's necessary. But this is what we call the kind of bottom up approach. And uh, this is in the end, not entirely enough. So the catalogs have excellent capabilities of ingesting all that technical metadata. You can just point the catalog into a database and it crawls around automatically and fetches uh, all the tables and columns and whatnot and all sorts of metadata about those tables and columns. You have your data types, you have maybe some sort of auto automatic tagging of, you know, this looks like a phone number type of stuff. And uh, you can plug these catalogs into a vast amount of different kinds of systems. So as these catalog initiatives quite often uh, are started and led, started from and led by IT departments, it means that this uh, capability of ingesting all the technical metadata comes to the forefront. 
and and what you get out of that is is and and this is almost almost to to a word an actual statement that i've heard we have registered 350 systems we have 15000 database tables in the catalog what a great success which again okay yeah you know you have now a lot of technical metadata that's good very good for you well done but the real questions around data are not necessarily about individual uh, database tables and columns they are questions like here our example uh, nick the, uh, the example guy the su supply chain manager who appears in many of our materials but doesn't actually exist as far as i know but, but uh, we'll use nick here as an example uh, he says i need to figure out what data we have on logistics related costs for road transport in germany for route optimization that might be an actual business problem this guy Nick has, hypothetical Nick has. Now, if you have that sort of a question in your head and you go into a data catalog and it doesn't really matter, you know, how fancy the UI is or whatever. But if that data catalog has now information about 350 systems or 15,000 database tables, how does that help you understand the, the uh, answer or find the answer to your question here? If, if these initiatives are done based on maximum amount of technical metadata being ingested as fast as possible on a vast scale, being led by IT so that every database administrator is super happy, we have now a very good register of all the tables we have, it doesn't really help with the context. So we see quite often that uh, organizations that we talk with they, they mentioned that yes we've had the data catalog initiative going on for three years and there's a million different things in there but people are not really using it and this is really the reason the bottom-up approach fails to provide context to that technical metadata now instead and this is now getting to the core of today's topic instead we should be thinking top down and Top down means we want to understand the context of that data primarily. We want to be business centric. We want to focus on not on what data do we have in terms of, you know, OK, 15,000 tables, but on what do we have data about? And that's the context. What is this data actually about? This data is about logistic routes, about deliveries, about trucks, about costs, invoices, whatever that is. These are not technical objects. These are not uh, part of the technical metadata, but this is the contextual metadata that gives people the ability to actually then use that data for their actual purposes. So we are trying to uh, build something around these catalogs and around this technical metadata that allows us to handle that metadata in terms of things that are actually important. Files and tables are not actually important. Very few organizations uh, run their businesses around the number of tables and reports and table uh, files, or whatever they have. It is about customers and invoices and deliveries and so on. These are the things that the business is really about. So if we are able to connect the technical metadata we have, and we'll talk about that in a minute, connect this with these important topics, then that means that we are able to bring in more people to the catalog. These people are able to, to um, get answers to their questions. You know, I have logistics data, logistics related costs here. You know, I need to understand what data do I have about that? What do we have about that is the real question. So we need to start building this whole thing by understanding the business context of the data and then link it with the actual data. Normal users do not approach a catalog saying, I want to know about this specific database table. They say, I want to know about deliveries. And this is a complete kind of uh, turnaround on, in the ways of, of thinking about data catalogs. We're not going to be building around technical metadata. We're going to be building around context. Both are needed. And of course, governance, governance metadata is needed as well. But we have to choose carefully what the centerpiece of this is. So here we have it kind of as a comparison. Now, the three kinds of metadata that I mentioned, governance metadata, contextual metadata, and technical metadata. On the left here, we have the uh, bottom-up approach. We're using these automated crawling capabilities, which, which are very great in, in most data catalogs to, to ingest a lot of this technical metadata. We build everything around it. 
there's a mass of technical metadata and we try to link that with the the uh, governance aspects with the context here's a table what sorts of rules and policies apply to this table who owns this table what is this table perhaps about if we even get to that question because contextual metadata is often forgotten but the top-down idea is turning that around we start with the context we say okay invoices and then we say okay what sort of governance information relates to invoices who cares about the systems at this point what sort of governance uh, relates to invoice data who owns invoice data in this organization can we use it? are there restrictions on how invoice data can be utilized are there policies relating to let's say the um, personally identifiable information within those invoices that we should care about again without looking at the systems we can discuss and we should discuss this as a whole relating to invoice data and then we can start thinking okay where does my invoice data actually live in it lives in these tables and these files and these systems or whatever which is the technical metadata which we still get uh, via this automated cra crawling capability but it's no longer the center of the uh, of the catalog another question we must ask here is okay these are your two options oh well theoretically you could start with governance metadata as well but i mean governance of what but let's say these are your two options here uh, and which one of these is going to make it easier to utilize the catalog i think the the answer is quite obvious catalogs very rarely are meant for it users alone so so uh, being able to kind of um, give this layer of business context to people first is, is absolutely vital. And this relates to one of the benefits that we're going to be talking about soon, uh, which is the kind of um, the, the, the uh, wide, uh, widening usage of the catalog in the organization, the adoption rate of, of the uh, tool. Okay, so, so contextual metadata could and create, how do we do that? How do you understand business? How do you document this business? And now we're getting, of course, to the early topic, my favorite topic, data modeling. Data modeling is a simple way of doing exactly this thing. So you, you want to clarify the terminology. What do you mean, we mean by an invoice? So what's the difference between a customer and a client? Data modeling. Good data model is always about the context. It, it helps us understand what the data actually means for the actual business. And in fact, it's not just about the data, it's in fact about the business itself. My favorite quote in the whole world, uh, there on the right-hand side by Alex Sharp, a data model is a description of a business in terms of the things it needs to know about. So a data model is you know proper data model isn't really even about data it's just describing the business in terms of these data things data about invoices data about customers and then we figure out how we define those terms and that gives us the contextual metadata so data modeling in fact is a way to capture that uh, contextual metadata in a structured format that we can then utilize within our catalog and how we utilize that is of course by linking it up with different levels of more detailed technical models until we get to the actual database and so on. So in effect, we have this gap between the business understanding on the other hand and IT understanding on the other. And uh, we use different levels of data models to bridge that. And the, the direction of these arrows there on this picture is very important. We want to start from the business end. This is the top down idea. What do we have data about? Customers. Okay, what do you mean by a customer? We figure out what these words are. What do we have data about? What information should exist? How the customer should be linked to other data items? Customers should always be linked to invoices. Invoices should be linked to products, uh, to delivery, so on and so forth. Logical data models describe to us individual data solutions for individual use cases. This might be data marts or uh, whatever data products you have. How is that? data about those customers and deliveries actually organized for the purposes of that particular uh, data product it is documentation about the data product and uh, only when we've decided that uh, this data product here uh, is is done in snowflake or you know wh whatever technical platform then that gives us the the ability to describe the physical model how has this data product been implemented in this particular technology and that then gives us the exact databases and tables and so on 
but we want to bridge the whole gap. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to discuss about these topics. Uh, business and IT will not have a common language and there's a danger of, of, of massive misunderstandings when some people are talking about clients and other people are talking about customers. So different levels of data models and uh, on the kind of highest level where we figure out what are the core things in our domain, in our logistics domain that I've been using here as an example, uh, what are the things the business needs to know about? This gives us an understanding of the domain. A conceptual model does that excellently. We have a very clear business language description, no systems, no tables, no files, no difficult technical names of what data exists about the domain. What do we have data about? Now, the individual data solutions, the data products, data marts, reports, you know, whatever AI thing is, uh, might organize parts of this data or the entire data set in different ways. And those are then the individual data products for which we have logical models. But the context remains the same. The context is always, it is always about destinations, routes and trips. It doesn't matter how you organize that data physically. So that's why conceptual modeling can give us the con true context of a domain. So what we really need to do within a data catalog is to, to link this contextual metadata with the technical metadata so that we can say, okay, you know, deliveries, I'm interested in deliveries. Where is the data about deliveries? That is a question that we have to be able to answer in the catalog. And on the other direction, we also need to be able to, to uh, link technical metadata higher to higher levels of, of the contextual metadata so that if you are indeed coming from the direction of this, uh, these actual physical implementations, you, you have a table and you say, hmm, okay, I have a table here with a complicated technical name. What does a row in this table actually mean? You have to have the ability to go back to the business concepts, to the conceptual models, to the model of the domain to understand what things you really have that data about. So catalog tools have this capability. They, most of them have the capability to manage uh, business terms or concepts or, or uh, objects and the technical metadata and the ability to link them. This linking ability must exist. If it doesn't, then something is badly wrong. The fact is that it's not always, um, let's say most often it is not possible to properly convey that contextual metadata information directly in the catalog. You need to have the capability to create data models to actually understand the structures. And that is not something that catalogs usually do. So in effect, you end up doing data modeling, LE logo is there, and then you end up having your physical data sources and you pull the metadata of both and combine them, link them together within the data catalog. That is connecting the bottom up and top down views within the catalog. And this linkage gives you the whole picture of, of the metadata. So step by step, first, we understand what the business is about. We do not look at uh, technical diagrams of architecture. We do not look at lineage diagrams. We do not care about databases. What is the business actually about? Customers, invoices, deliveries, products, etc., etc. Then if we want to really organize the data in our catalog, we define meaningful data assets or domains based on these actual business domains here. So, okay, deliveries or logistics. So what do we have about logistics? A data model describes that. We model that data asset, the logistics data asset on a conceptual level so that we understand what are the core business entities, what are the relationships between them. And this is the contextual metadata that we need to add into the catalog. After that, we can discuss about governance. As, uh, as, as we've identified that, okay, we have data about deliveries, we have to be able to also discuss the governance aspects of that. Who owns delivery data? Can we use it, you know, in which ways, et cetera, et cetera. This is the governance metadata. And we can already add that into the catalog still without looking at the systems, which only come uh, on point five here ingest the technical metadata into the catalog, link it with the contextual metadata, and you get the whole picture. And the way to make the catalog easier to approach for normal human beings is to build it so that the contextual metadata is presented up front. The catalog should not look like a list of database tables. It should look like a list of business things that you might care about. And that gives you the, the uh, entry point 
to the rest of the metadata. So we have here an example. Um, this is a very simplified thing, but uh, if we consider kind of the metadata structure of a data catalog, uh, we have here various domains which are which are modeled as conceptual models. We have uh, these are kind of collections of business objects of things we have data about. Uh, each of these data assets is assigned a data owner and a set of rules of policies, the governance metadata. But now note that uh, let's say the employee's data asset is basically a, a conceptual model describing employees and contracts of whatever information we have about employees we set the governance based on that and then we add the technical metadata that links to that data asset you can find employee contract data from you know this and that place but you see here the idea is that we're not attempting to bring the tables and databases to the front we're saying okay employees data assets uh, get the governance find out where the data is, and then the whole picture exists. So a data catalog organized this way would probably display these uh, contextual uh, metadata um, elements, these data assets, at the very beginning when you enter the catalog. And from there, you could navigate to governance aspects and physical aspects of that data. You could also utilize this in interesting ways. Uh, this is an example architecture that is actually based on a true story. But uh, if we have this capability to connect business context with the technical metadata within the catalog, this actually allows us to design um, data products which make sense from a business perspective and which abstract away the complexities of the existing data infrastructure, all those 350 system and systems and 15,000 tables that we have, we can use this conceptual level to, to uh, model uh, the contents of data products that we should be uh, presenting to our data users. And we can, because we have the information in the catalog on how these conceptual things are linked to technical metadata, we can automatically even in some cases build, for example, as, as in here, uh, API endpoints that basically give you, let's say, data about invoicing in terms of invoices, products, and customers, regardless of what the complexities of the underlying systems are. So in effect, we are building data products based on business-driven modeling, design that happens on the contextual metadata level, and then we're using these connections to automate the generation of those actual data products. This is one example, it could be something else, it could be a manual process, whatever, but the idea remains, design on high level, design on business terms, and then use those linkages to build from there. So, uh, why would we do this? What's the benefit? I've, I've kind of divided these benefits into three categories here. Uh, depending on the organization, depending on the experiences of data catalogs and data governance the organization has had, these are perhaps differently um, weighted in, in different organizations. But one of the most critical aspects of, of, let's say, data catalog failures is kind of the overall accessibility of the catalog. Does anyone even want to use it? And uh, a key element there is, is data discoverability. The whole catalog basically exists to make data more easily discovered. If we are able to provide the users of that catalogs with this business layer, invoices, deliveries, products, then that makes data relating to invoices, deliveries and products that much easier to discover. You are no longer kind of uh, walking around in the jungle of databases and tables you're saying, hmm, I'm interested in deliveries, and you dive in from there. That makes data discoverable. That also makes it easier and more accessible for business users, and this increases adoption. Quite a few projects have had problems with user, adoptions of, uh, user adoption rate of a data catalog because it is simply too complicated. It does not actually offer the uh, average business user or data consumer uh, an easy way to figure out their data needs because it's focused on technical metadata. And overall, this helps people to connect the uh, real life things, the business things and the technical data objects. This is kind of data literacy. When you say, okay, I'm, you know, invoice data, then you have an understanding in the catalog of what that invoice data is physically and what that means for the business. Governance is of course also made easier. Uh, 
when we are discussing governance aspects at the level of this, this contextual metadata, it is easier to get people involved. It is easier to find business ownership for them. No one wants to own a bunch of database tables. People do want to own invoice data. We create the shared language, which is also a benefit of data modeling overall, that we understand each other better, uh, not just between business and IT, but often also between business units. And we're able to apply policies and rules relating to specific data items more consistently. Because if you have contract data in two systems, it is likely that the same rules and policies should apply in both systems. If we want to define a consistent policy, it should be applied to contract data, not a specific set of tables in a specific uh, system. And as we go towards uh, utilizing the metadata in the catalog to build more data products, we can ensure that these data products are actually more relevant because we are able to, to identify real needs. You need data about deliveries. Okay, you know, here's the options that you can use. We are able to understand requirements better. If we are building, we are the people building the data product, we might say that mm, you're talking about deliveries. Okay, so which one of these data sources you're actually interested in? And this results in, in less of a business IT gap. We now have that common shared language in the catalog, which connects these two worlds and which allows us to move back and forth between them. So these are the benefits that we see in many organizations that have been starting to use early on top of a data catalog that have been starting to apply these kind of business driven contextual metadata principles on top of what they already have. So what does the future look like and where do we go from here? Now, obviously, in an ideal world, all different kinds of metadata would always be interconnected and that navigation would be as simple as possible. We, of course, are talking about the business side approach here mostly, but it still happens that you have to go the other way around. You might have an existing system. And you need to know what is this, this data, this row actually about. So all of these different kinds of metadata, these have to be interconnected and navigable from any direction. That's where we want to be. What Ellie wants to do is to take care of the business side, really. That's for us the most important gap in this whole system. So we want to be able to drive that with the help of conceptual data models, with the help of glossaries. We're building all sorts of new kinds of uh, metadata management capabilities around this idea that a data model captures the business context. And then on top of that, you can link all kinds of things. So navigation, discoverability, these are very important for us. And we are really coming at this uh, from the business side of things. Of course, there are interesting possibilities of, of uh, solving this problem in the future and helping helping us and helping you to solve it. Uh, we are talking often about intelligent modeling capabilities internally, and we've done some experiments on this. There's very interesting things going on here. Uh, if we are able to utilize existing metadata and the structures that we can derive, for example, from, from speech or, or written text or whatever, uh, if we are able to derive structures that, that tell us how that metadata should be connected to other metadata, then that gives you that more uh, ability to navigate. The navigation itself, uh, we are envisioning kind of an enterprise view, a, a graph, if you'd like, uh, which gives us visibility and linkages between all these different objects at different levels of metadata. But we always have to remember that the that view is centered on these business terms, because that is where we want to start. Contextual metadata is the centerpiece. And obviously for Ellie as a tool to actually enable this, we want to integrate with the data catalog tools. So the ability to produce this contextual metadata for the catalogs and then to link back and forth between different tools is, is what we need in order to make both the data catalogs uh, behave better and help more people and also to make modeling things easier in Ellie. So that's, that's the plan. That's where we are going. Uh, that is also the end of, of this monologue part. Uh, one thing that I want to mention before we uh, move into questions and answers, we have another webinar coming up um, November 2nd. That's Hannu. Hannu Järvi is one of the uh, founders of Ellie and has recently joined us full time. So Hannu is going to be talking about how to turn data outputs into business outcomes. This should be a very, very interesting. So be there as well. Uh, but now I think 
it is QA time and uh, we could also set up the poll ongoing unless you have done that already Stan so let's see what we have on the chat just a second yeah there's a there's a uh, good uh, example a comment from George there saying that he's seen organization capturing a lot more contextual stuff in modeling metadata tool over a long period and uh, at Big Data London which was just a couple of weeks ago Stan was there with with um, the LE, LE team it's, it was disappointing to see that most vendors were totally focused on stuff we know about data, ignoring almost everything else. That's that's kind of a good point that uh, we know all those technical things, all the technical tools, all the the um, uh, engineering focused tools. They have all the technical metadata. It's at your fingertips there. It's it's that's kind of the easy thing. It's already included. Uh, the rest of it is the difficult problem, and that's why Ellie is here. Lineage technical metadata is required to prove it. That, that's true. Lineage is, is important. There's discussion there. Um, Stan points out uh, my favorite thing about Lineage is that there's actually different kinds of Lineage. There's a technical Lineage. And I think this was something that we mentioned uh, a while ago when we did a webinar with Cindy Meyerson about Data Vault, that there's kind of a technical Lineage here horizontally if you'd like that that goes from you know in this table i have data that came from here and that came from there and that came from there and you know what actions happen in between that's your technical lineage right but there's kind of a lineage vertically if you'd like which says mm -hmm, here i have my physical table which is you know about it's, it's the physical model uh, what does this object logically mean what business concepts it is about and this modeling lineage or contextual lineage uh, exists for every single table in every single place in our uh, technical lineage. So that's that's an inter interesting and important question to answer. And interestingly also, many lineage solutions are mainly about technical lineage and there's very little work being done in, in the kind of contextual lineage. Oh, good note about Alex Sharp. Uh, he writes about how interrelated data and process modeling are absolutely true. That's one of Alex's uh, Alex key points. A process creates data and uh, the data object move, uh, moves uh, within the process as a kind of token and so on. So uh, he has some very good uh, info on that in his books and trainings. Some questions there also a uh, hybrid approach for contextual versus physical metadata uh, can you for example start bottom up but then identify something worth value and add business context with your domain experts yes this is also a very interesting approach uh, of course this is actually often the situation uh, where we come in when a customer has an existing catalog and they've been working on that for god knows how long uh, they have a set of bottom-up technical metadata in there and then they realize that only part of that is actually valuable. Uh, in that situation, it is often so that, that you're kind of trying to, how should I put it, uh, match the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach in the middle so that you figure out, all right, actually the, in, in, the important data for us at this point is, is logistics data and there seems to be a set of tables or whatever that contain logistics data here but we haven't yet figured out what the logistics data is really about. So the reasons and so forth and how do they uh, connect to each other? So you start working with the models from top down, you start figuring out from bottom up, okay, what are these tables actually about? And in the middle you meet and you are able to link your existing technical metadata with your newly created contextual metadata. So that does often happen and it might even be kind of um, uh, reverse engineering approach really where you are doing like a detective work you're trying to figure out what does this row actually really mean and that might be a really really difficult question to answer which is kind of ironic because that row is going to be used in some super important reporting down the line and if you are not really sure what it is about that's probably not going to be a very trustworthy report so Contextual metadata is often added on top of existing physical metadata in a catalog. I don't see anything wrong about that approach. You don't necessarily have to always start from the top. It's just that you need to have the top-down uh, perspective at some point.
there are some comments also uh, about uh, how conceptual logical models provide the nouns for naming business processes and services. That is certainly true. Um, in effect, conceptual modeling, because as we defined here, it's about business terms, uh, non-technical terms. It is modeling the language that we use. So we'll find the nouns, you know, customer delivery, delivery invoice. And we'll often find also the verbs. Customer uh, gets a delivery. Uh, product is invoiced with an invoice, and etc., etc. We, we get a model of the language we use. And this is actually exactly how it should go. Let's see from the polls. We had one about uh, primary users of data catalog. Uh, we have a few answers here. Uh, who are the intended primary users of your data catalog? The options were data engineers and architects, BI developers and analysts, and data consumers such as controllers, etc. The most um, popular option of this is the last one. So most data catalogs are intended to be used by the data consumers. Now, this is also how, how we've seen it, and this is an excellent uh, example of why it is so important to be able to provide this context. Because these people, data consumers, they do not care about your tables. Or if they do, it is because they have been traditionally forced to care about your tables. But they really care about those deliveries. For data engineers and architects, that's perfectly fine. If you are intending your, your catalog to be mainly used by your IT staff, uh, really, then maybe the focus on technical metadata is perfectly fine. But this is a, a question, this is a conscious decision you have to be making in the very early stages. Who am I intending to become these primary users here? Uh, there's also a, a poll on uh, if, if you already use a data catalog or not. We have a bunch of uh, replies there. Most answers are about considering a data catalog, which matches very well with what we've seen uh, in the market there. Some people already have catalogs. Some organizations are very far ahead in that process, but many organizations are thinking about it. And uh, in some cases, the maturity level is not there yet, or the whole data landscape isn't complicated enough yet to actually warrant uh, getting a catalog. So, you know, in early days, and this was something uh, that, that was, came up in a discussion on LinkedIn recently, uh, the catalog can actually be flesh and bones. So there's someone there or group of people there who already know where your data is and what is it about. To a certain level, that might be enough. You don't need a separate tool. Maybe the next step is getting PowerPoints and Excels to describe the same thing. And that's that might be enough for a while. But even these things do not change the fact that you need to have the understanding of the context as well as that list of tables and systems. Good. Um, there's a question from Magnus. What should I do as a business owner? Where do I start? Excellent question. Thank you for that. Um, you should really try to describe what your business is about in terms of these this, uh, concepts and use that to communicate with your IT department or your data people to say, uh, I need to know where my delivery data is. Instead of saying, I need to know what is in that system, you go, I need to know what's in where, where my delivery data is. And that means you have to de define what a delivery is. And that leads to interesting discussions, of course. But I think that's kind of the, the responsibility uh, that lies on the business side. Uh, IT cannot kind of automatically determine uh, these business concepts. Th there's no way to do that um, somehow automatically or, or externalize that to some consultants or something. You have to know what your business is about. You have to be able to, to formulate that in a way that can be connected with the technical metadata. I think that's a starting point. Um, it's also maybe uh, a starting point to start requesting and asking for that. I want to be able to discuss about data in business terms. I don't want to be able, I, I don't want to talk about tables and files. Uh, there's a couple of questions that we can still answer. Um, there's a question from George. Most metadata tools require you to either use the meta models they provide or design one yourself before you can en enter anything. 
Oh, uh, this is actually a very interesting question as well. The meta model, of course, is the internal model of the of the catalog tool. Uh, that means what sorts of buckets does it have for your metadata? In many cases, the default solution is probably going to be good enough. In some cases, it is highly complicated. In other cases, uh, it's not at all what you would think it is. So customization op op the, um, options do often exist. What we're seeing, at least, is that in many, many places, this meta model is customized. Out of the box meta models are rarely used, especially in larger organizations. But of course, they are used if it happens to match with what you're expecting. And uh, let's say in slightly smaller organizations, it might be quite good, quite good enough. But I'm, I'm not going to go into details on that. It's a wide topic. Uh, the fun thing here is that, for example, once we've been using Ellie to model what is in the catalog, so the meta model itself is a conceptual model in Ellie. Sade, hey, hey, Sade has a question about business value, um, business value coming through data modeling. I think here the business value is, is often in the discoverability aspect. So how easy can you make discovering data that people might be uh, able to utilize? It's not easy to measure always, but uh, I'd say if you are able to, to allow anyone who has just recently been hired as business controller, if you are able to allow them find data that they're interested in without them learning the entire IT architecture by heart, then that's business value right there. If nothing else, you're saving time. But in fact, it often means that you're also uh, improving quality. The data is really about what, the, what they need. Remco has a good point about starting starting with ELM and, and business. Yes, ELM is a very good method of, of uh, discovering the business concepts and documenting those. And that then moves directly to conceptual models that can be uh, created in Ellie. Paul has a question. Did I use Ellie for, for uh, contextualizing how things fit together? Uh, for some things, yes. Uh, some of that is just you know, drawings on the whiteboard transferred into uh, Google Sheets. Um, but these are good questions. Thank you all. I think we are about at the point where we have to be closing up for today. Thanks all for the discussion. Thank you for coming here. Uh, please remember the next webinar that we are going to be running with Hannu on November the 2nd. Uh, do join up with that. And uh, the recording of this will be made available soon. Um, there will be also the uh, slides available. I think they are right now uploading to the um, system itself. Oh, yes, there they are. Uh, you are able to download the slides that we used. Feel free to share them with your colleagues. If you have any questions whatsoever uh, that we didn't cover here, if you want to talk about data catalogs or modeling or something, please do contact us. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me by email yuha.corpel at and um, would happy to would be happy to be in touch with you. I think that is everything for today. Thank you. We'll see you again.